Happy New Year, everybody, from the Bison Video Blog, along with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. We're still talking football, Jeff, in early January. The championship game is now upon us, just a few days away. We leave for Frisco tomorrow, as do the Bison, as they get to set to play Sam Houston State for the national championship. Sam Houston has a lot of skilled guys. In the conference awards season, the offensive player, defensive player, coach of the year, uh, and player of the year, all were from Sam Houston State, all different guys. The Bison have to pick and choose who they're going to have to try to contain on Saturday. Well, which would probably explain why Sam Houston State's unbeaten. Yeah. And everybody all year thought, oh, they're going to lose here, they're going to lose there. But they kept steadily ranking, uh, moving up the rankings. you got to remember, Sam Houston was not in, in the top ten picture no. for the longest time. Six and five a year ago, it took them a while to get the respect uh, in, in countrywide. But, yeah, NDSU, in, in respect to uh, uh, stop in Sam Houston, and it starts with Tim Flanders who had 270-some-odd yards against Montana in the FCS semis. He was held in check by Montana State, but yesterday Craig Bull came right out and said it. I asked him the question, does he remind you at all about Taiwan Jones? Because that's who he looked like to me when I saw Sam Houston play for the first time. He said, no, he reminds him of Barry Sanders. Hey, you remember, NDSU is not uh, foreign to stopping a big-name no. guy. They've been doing it all year. Let's start with Marquise Gray. Yep. Then you go to Illinois State's Matt Brown, Austin Summer, South Dakota State, Tyler Rennie at Northern Iowa. Uh, Shakir Bell, a leading country, uh, rusher in the country from Indiana State. Justin Thorpe, let's go to the playoffs right. from James Madison. You had to stop him. Chris Lum. Chris Lum mm -hmm. from Lehigh. And then also in the Georgia Southern <laughs> Triple Offense. On and on and on. Now here comes Tim Flanders. That being said, I think the key Saturday, Dom, is you have to stop Richard Sincere. The great wide receiver for Sam Houston State, who was the offensive player of the year. Flanders was the player of the year in the conference. Mm -hmm. You can figure that one out. You're a smarter man than I. But he is not only a wide receiver, he's a running back threat, and he was actually a quarterback in high school, Jeff. This guy can do everything on the field for the Bearcats. Really effective out of the Wildcat yep. formation. 120 attempts, 8 point yards a carry, 8.0 yards a carry. I think Flanders is around the 5-6 area with uh, over 200 attempts. I just think Sincere is a game Breaker. Montana State found that out yes. where uh, they held down Flanders, but uh, Sincere went crazy and the, and the Bearcats moved on. You have lauded, and, and appropriately so, how well the Bison defense have adjusted week to week in the playoffs, going from the vaunted option from, jo from Georgia Southern to the passing attack of Lehigh to the running game of James Madison. They've had two and a half weeks now to get ready for Sam Houston State. What do we expect out of the Bison defense on Saturday? Well, they're going to have to find a, a, a component of everything because Sam Houston will run everything. And, and you talk about Georgia Southern's offense and triple option. The, one of the reasons it's effective is because it's rare. Yeah. Not many teams see it. Sam Houston's the same thing. They have so many different alignments and sets and personnel that it's really tough to get a hold of. Montana found that out in the, in the right. semifinal the game. Because uh, all of a sudden, here, came, here comes Sam Houston running a set that they haven't used since the third week of the season. Here's also, I had a fan come up to me, and I think this was a really accurate statement, but to say that what NDSU does on offense is not frequently seen, especially in the South, where we're just going to come, we're going to hit you in the mouth, and you're going to try and stop us. Not a lot of seemingly different uh, options Way for NDSU. Is it? It's, yeah. uh, it's uh, right, left with uh, McNaughton or Jury. It's a play-action pass with Jensen, and let's call it good. You mentioned you had a, a story earlier in the week in the newspaper about the Bison success against the Southland teams. Obviously, they're one on one against Sam Houston. Uh, I saw the game was with Stephen F. When I, since I've been here in 2006, you saw the games prior, uh, early in the transition. What do the Southland teams do? What do they, is their bread and butter that Sam Houston would like to do as well on Saturday? And in talking to the former players, the number one element that stands out is their quickness. Of mm. course, they have uh, a smaller, quicker team. I think, with the exception of Sam Houston, NDSU beat those other teams by just outmanning them and out physical and, and being in better condition, quite frankly. They went down to the heat of Louisiana and beat Nichols State and actually outworked them. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, now Sam Houston. It's a matter can Sam Houston measure up to NDSU's physicality. I asked Craig Bull this yesterday. I'll ask you as well. We expect anywhere we could hear of 8,000 to 10,000 Bison fans that are going to be in uh, Frisco for Saturday. Obviously how close Sam Houston is, there's going to be plenty of them. Will there be a home field advantage for either squad? You expect this to be about 50-50 right down the middle. I think it's going to be 50-50. It's a matter how many Bison tickets were able to get yeah. tickets and sources <laughs> other than the allocated tickets. It was a learning experience, Bison fans, yeah. because in future title games, if they do get this far, don't wait. Don't for, wait. Don't wait for the allocated <laughs> tickets. Get right on NCAA.com and go for. Got to remember, this is common in bowl games. Yeah. Uh, University of Alabama in a hundred thousand seat stadium got seventeen thousand tickets allocated them. I mean, th that's uh, a lot of people are going to be left out. Exactly. Or going a different route and paying uh, quite a bit of money to try to get to in to uh, to see the game. 
Well, you mentioned also what the turf they're going to be playing on. It's a natural grass field, and Craig Bowl made the appropriate comment to me saying it's nothing like South Dakota State. But we we talked about this way back when, the week of the Jacks game. The Bison aren't used to playing on, on grass. No, and you know, I don't think Sam Houston isn't either. Mm -hmm. But this st this stuff is so short and so uh, in such good condition that I think it's almost going to act more like natural or artificial turf. I really do. It's almost more like a field turf, turf substance with its mixture, and and I think uh, it'll be. Uh, I don't think field conditions will play into this game. You mentioned though, there's going to be a lot of Bison fans, and we've talked all through the playoffs how much an advantage the Fargo Dome has been. Do they lose that now heading outside, less fans? for this game on Saturday. Neutral site, I think both teams lose it. I think Sam Houston's been home for every game, too. Yep. Will they lose it? Of course they will. They'll have a little bit. I think you're going to see a 50-50 split, probably, in, in, in fan attendance. And field conditions, neither team has really played on this field. And neither team has played in this nope. stadium. I think uh, you throw that out, and the uh, best team will win. We've got plenty more coming. You have your cowboy boots ready? I got a go. partner. <laughs> We got our map and ready to go for Texas that Craig Bull provided as well. We'll have much more breaking down the game between the Bison and the Bearcats once we get to Frisco. Our daily blogs start on Wednesday. Leading us up to game day coverage, we'll have the blog with Kevin Schnepp, Jeff, Eric, and myself, and of course full coverage on WDAY as well. This is the Bison Video Blog, the final edition from Fargo as we get you set for Frisco. Yeehaw!